Hey everybody, how's it going? I just got back from camping and was hoping to do some Corvette videos. Unfortunately, my wife's Cadillac is throwing a P0174 or P0172 code, which means lean mixture in the fuel bank, something, something, something. About six months ago, I had this problem. It was a hose disconnected. Now it's the intake gaskets. And in order to avoid mom rage, rawr, we are gonna fix this car so she doesn't freak out at Pip and myself. All right, and there's a couple things that uh, help me realize that it's the intake gasket on the, the car this time. First, the car is running like total poop. There's a little bit of hesitation, backfiring a little bit when you're still on the gas, and when the car is running, you can hear it sucking air up on the engine. So that's kind of the big thing, and I'm gonna jump in the car, plug in the code reader, diagnose a bad intake gasket. It's hard to get these to show up here, but you will see it's uh, P0174 is the code, there we go. It says if there's drivability issues, repair immediately. And as we go through all the codes are P0174, P0172, which is where we start to see what the issue is. And when we Google that, that's where we find out it could be intake gasket or vacuum leaks. And as I mentioned, for me, saw the check engine light, car was running poorly, pulled the code, got that code. Do a quick Google search. It tells you what the, the, the issues could be. Vacuum leaks, one of them. Bad intake gasket is the other one, which is honestly the most common. And that's what I thought it was last time. The car runs, runs like poop, and you can hear it sucking in air through the intake. So we know that intake gasket under there is bad. So we've got our intake gasket. Honestly, we had this last time. We pulled it all apart, and you can see a big non-returnable if seal is broken. Really? Label right there. So we've already got the intake gaskets for this. Now it's just a matter of pulling these covers off and pulling the intake off and then putting on the new intake gaskets. Should be a pretty simple process. I'm gonna watch and find out and uh, see you guys whether it's easy or not. Let's find out. So for us, the first thing to do under the engine bay here is we're gonna remove this cover, these covers on the side, and we're gonna pull this bar out to get a, make it easier to get that intake out. You might have to pull it out to pull the intake out anyway. This cover here, you do have to take your oil filler cap off and then it just lifts up, pulls out of the way. We'll put the filler cap back in there. Pull all these uh, covers off over here. Once we get the side covers off, it gives us access to the bolts that hold this cross member on. And we're gonna get that out of the way so we can pull this intake off right here. Like I said, when it's running, you can hear somewhere on this car, it's sucking in air under this intake. So I know that gasket's bad. Things we'll have to get out of the way to do this. We'll have to unbolt the throttle body, unbolt that PCV connection there, be a fuel line back there, I think. That's about it. If you haven't done so already, jump down below, hit that subscribe button for me, like the video, leave some comments, let me know what you think. The cross member is held on by these uh, four 18 millimeter bolts, nuts, two on each side. So we're gonna pull those off and then we'll pull that member, cross member out of the way there. Once the cross member's out of the way, we're going to remove this back cover. There's, I don't know, like a thing there and a thing there that use this trim tool, pop them out. And then those two things come out and that whole cover comes out there. Then once we've got the covers out of the way, cross member out of the way, we're just gonna go through and disconnect some of these uh, hoses and the electrical connections that are on here. And then we're gonna unbolt this air hose. We'll probably go ahead and just lift this off with the throttle body in place. And actually, I think that kit comes with a gasket, so we'll probably pull that off and replace that gasket as well. Just because this might be tricky for you, this hose here, it just sits on there, there's no clamp. I did use a like a 90 degree pick to get up under the hose when it was on here and kind of work my way around. So that way it loosened it up so I could just pop that off. And then on the top, there's this sensor uh, that's just got a clip you push down on and the clipper pops off there. And then it's got like a little pin thing that like one of those little body panel clips right here. We're gonna pry out that holds it in place. We've gotta get this guy out here still. And then on the back, I do see there's a couple bolts back here that are kind of hidden that look like they hold the manifold onto this bracket. So we'll have to make sure we get those out. Then over here on the, the passenger side, there is this guy that's connected to the intake manifold. Um, I don't know if that's a fuel return line. I honestly don't know what that is. There's just a bolt here that holds that on. It should slide out pretty straightforward. And then we should be about ready just to start disconnecting things as far as unbolting the manifold here. 
for this guy here, this hose here, if we follow it back to the, the back side here, it connects on here and we're just gonna take it off here and we're gonna leave it attached. On here, there's this little clip. I think maybe you can see it. All you do is you push this clip and you lift up. So there's this little clip that's on the backside. Push it and lift up and it comes right off of that guy right there. So now we don't have to worry about that. Right, so the only thing I have left is this guy here. I'm gonna have to Google what this is to see what the thing is. Jeez, oh my gosh. What the heck, who's honking the horn? Oh, Mr. Pip, is it break time, buddy? Are you just telling me that it's time to take a break? Look, Pip says time to take a break, so we're gonna take a quick break. Take a quick break here while uh, Pip sits in the driver's seat over there relaxing. All right, so then back at this. This hose here that we disconnected back there, now that we've got it disconnected, we can take it and just spin it, and it'll lift out of this thing there now to get that out of the way. So you can just set that aside up there or something. Okay, this guy here, if you spin it around, there's a little clip that you can pry out on the bottom that allows you then to pull the line off of here once you get it unclipped there. And it's just like a, a purge valve or something, but there's the line disconnected. Now I can get to the power cable below there, unclip that and slide that off as well. And the other option is just to unbolt it here and probably slide it all out somehow. You gotta turn it to get to this clip right there to unclip that thing. You gotta see this front part's gotta pry up and then it disconnects. It was a little bit difficult to get to that without unbolting that and twisting it there. So you may have to do that on yours. And really the only other thing then keeping that on there other than the bolts, we've got this throttle body. There's a wire on the front here. There's a little red retainer clip. You gotta slide that out in order to get this to disconnect off of here. That little thing, that red clip slides up in there and it keeps this from being able to be pushed down. So once you slide that out, you just press that in and you can unplug it. And now we're ready to unbolt the bolts to hold this manifold on. Okay, so there's six of these 13 millimeter super long bolts on here. They're probably all the same size. So we can pull those guys out. Oh yeah, they're all the same size. Really? Really? Look at this last one. I mean, it's not gonna be that big of a deal, but you can't get that out. So what we're gonna do is lift this off with that bolt in there and then uh, make sure when we reassemble it, we put that bolt in there before putting this back down or I'm gonna be really upset and feel really stupid. And once it's all unbolted and everything's out of the way, we should be able to lift this guy up. It's a, uh, this bracket under the back is kind of holding it down. So we're gonna probably have to, gosh dang it, stupid bracket. I'm gonna probably have to unbolt this bolt way down there for this back bracket so I can move it out of the way. Cause some genius thought it was a good idea to do that. <laughs> and when I say some genius, I'm not talking about our beloved viewer, genius, who follows along. Thanks, Gene, appreciate you, buddy. Now that that annoying bracket's out of the way, we can lift this guy up out of here, maybe. Maybe that bracket's out of the way. God dang it, oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to put this down, I think, to do this. Hold on. Well, that's silly. There's a thing held on right here by one of those body clip things. We gotta pull that out so we can get that out of the way. There we go. There is the gasket we're gonna replace, at least one of them. And we're gonna carefully pull this guy out of the way because there's a bunch of dirt and grease and stuff down here we don't want to drop down into the intake there, or into the, the heads there, I should say. So I'm gonna probably get some rags just to shove them in here to block this off because this is super dirty. And a previous owner of this car obviously lived on gravel, this thing is Super nasty, and for those of you who watched any of my other videos where I did CV shafts and stuff, you saw that as well. But here is this gasket we're replacing, and oh yeah, it was definitely leaking right there. I don't know if you can see that. And then actually probably right there as well. So there's a couple spots where this thing was definitely bad. I am gonna get my air compressor out, I'm gonna dust that off, and then we're gonna wipe that all down before we go any further with this. And you can even kinda see on here 
where this thing was gonna was leaking along some of those uh, gasket things right through there where it's leaking that oil all around really bad. So we're gonna take some simple green and a rag and we're gonna wipe all of this down really good before we put the new gasket and stuff in here. You can see even after uh, wiping that down with a rag and simple green, it's still got some buildup through here. So I am going to use a little bit of elbow grease, probably get out one of my uh, detailing brushes here, go through and clean that up. So that way we get a really good seal on those gaskets and I don't have to worry about it leaking again. We're gonna do the same thing on the bottom of this intake. We're gonna take a, a rag and some simple green, clean this up, and then we're gonna pull the screws out here and we're gonna replace the seals that go under here that come with the kit there, uh, these seals here. So we'll be doing that here in just a moment. And like I said, we're just gonna take these uh, screws out of the back. They're a, a Torx screw. Take four of those out and replace these seals quick. And once you have it unbolted, there are these little notches on the side. I'm just gonna use my trim pry tool, put it in there, and just gonna pry it up to break the seals all the way around. And then there's those seals that we're gonna go ahead and replace here. I said we have a, a leak somewhere. There's a good chance these guys are leaking too, so we're gonna pull those out. Gonna clean up the bottom part of this intake here and then put those new seals in and reassemble this. And same with this, even after spending a good amount of time of scrubbing and trying to clean this, you can see these things are pretty dirty. These things were honestly probably leaking pretty good too, causing some of the issue I've been having. So I'm gonna grab a little brush, see if I can't clean this up a little bit because when you rub your fingers across it, you can kind of feel how it's a raised edge there from the oil that's kind of caked on there, dried up and burned into place sort of. I've mentioned it in a previous video, I, I kind of grew up with my dad working on cars. He kind of showed me how to work on cars. So I love doing this stuff. It's really enjoyable. I will say so far, this has been pretty easy. This has been one of those things where I think anyone with some basic automotive tools could do this job without a problem. Uh, the only specialty tool I've really had to use so far has been like a Torx wrench for the bottom of that intake. But everything else has been either sockets or screwdrivers stuff like that, stuff that you probably have at home. So this is a really easy job. I am confident you could definitely do this. For those of you wondering, I'm using a, like an aluminum type scrub brush here and I'm gently scraping this. I'm trying not to scratch the aluminum intake at all, but this is a good way to get this stuff off of here and clean this up. And I'm gonna pull each of these seals out just kind of one by one to replace them. As you can see they only go in one way. There's only one direction they'll fit because they're kind of rectangular and it's just about getting them in there so they're in place and then when we tighten it down it's gonna cause it to seal if you need to you can use your handy dandy little pick tool here to get in there and help pry it up to, to get a grip on it there because some of these don't want to come out very well but now you can see got it out put that new one in place pop it down we're just gonna go through and do all that and then put the bottom part of the manifold back on there New seals in, we're gonna go ahead and set this part of the manifold back in place and we're gonna go ahead and screw it back in using those torque bolts, bolts all the way across there and then we'll get ready to put this back in the vehicle. And then one more thing, we're gonna go ahead and pull this throttle body off because we do have a new seal to put on there as well so we're gonna go ahead and get that tossed in there. And to pull that throttle body off, it's just four 10 millimeter bolts that will take off right through here. And we can see there's that seal. We're gonna use that uh, pick just to pop that out of there again. And then we will clean up the throttle body, put in a new seal, and this thing will be about ready to go. This would be a good time to get in here and really clean out this throttle body if you have some throttle body cleaner get in there, spray that out. Otherwise, you can always use that simple green on a rag and really just wipe everything down to get that cleaned up, which we're going to do here. Intake reassembled. Now it's time to put in the new gasket, which will go in right there. There's actually some tabs it sits down in to hold it in place. And now we can throw that intake back on there. I'm gonna have to put down the camera to do this because I do have to move that bracket a little bit out of the way. I gotta make sure I've got this bolt in the intake because of that awesome design. And I'll get that in there and I'll join you again and we'll reassemble all this. Once the intake's back in place, we're gonna go ahead and bolt it back down. We're gonna 
follow the, the bolt pattern, which is gonna be like the centers, back, front, back, front, centers, or whatever it is, to make sure we get a nice even seal all the way around the gasket. Once we've gone through and torqued them down to 18 foot-pounds is what it looks like on this vehicle. We can go ahead and start reassembling all of the other parts, reattaching everything, make sure we don't miss anything. I'm gonna start with that bracket in the back so I don't forget it. And then this guy here again, we just can spin it around so we can see that plug and get it nice and tight in there. And then we can put it back around. Put that guy in there. Slide the clip back up into place. And then we can tighten that back down. Now we'll put this hose back in. And we'll just button this up quick. We'll just take a quick peek, make sure everything's plugged in. We have the plug there, hose here, sensor here, the purge valve hose thing plus sensor plug there. And everything else is bolted on. Now we can put the cover back on the back there, put the cross beam on, put the rest of the covers on, clear the code and start this thing up, make sure it works. Pip, look buddy, it's time to check to see if the car is done. Is the car done? Look, come here, Bip. And now that the gaskets are done, we're gonna go ahead and plug in our scan tool, clear the codes, and see if the car is running correctly again. We should be all set. We'll clear it anyway, just to make sure to go ahead and get everything done here. We've reset that check engine light. We have started the car and it is idling beautifully. It's just humming like it should. Successfully completed job. And we're gonna take the car for a quick test spin. Just drive it around the, uh, the blocks here, a couple blocks, just to make sure everything's going good. But so far, it's already running better. I know it's fixed. It's not hesitating, missing. It's idling the way it should, so. Like I said, successful job. As I mentioned earlier, this is a job I think, honestly, anyone with some basic tools could do. It was super straightforward, super easy. And then if you haven't already, subscribe down below. I appreciate the support. Follow along as I work on this car, my Corvette, my Focus, any other random vehicles I work on. I like to post these videos. And maybe one day you will get to see my Corvette run and be excited with me, because that would be great. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you learned something. Let me know what you thought down below. And until next time.